Hey, yo, what's going on right now? You're watching Casino is the Name. And in this video, we're going to talk about none other than getting to this money. All right. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about like what my career plans are. If you've been keeping up with what I talk about on this channel, um, I my goal is to be an SES. And that's a senior executive service. Right. That's an SES that is above the GS 15 level. Um, it's, it's above all civil service positions. Um, and GS positions range from GS1 to GS15. Now, I've never seen a GS1, 2, or 3. I've seen GS4s and up. But, um, but yeah, so I'm working my way to SES. But I was trying to do it originally from, well, that's hard to say. Because originally I still did start as a GS, but... I got out of the GS system and I went into government contracting and I was trying to do it. You know, I was, I was getting the experience of a CEO from like doing government contracts and stuff like that. Running crews, having a team, having my own company, doing that kind of thing, running payroll, you know, hiring, firing, all of that kind of stuff. So um, as a small business owner, you kind of do like a full gamut of executive kind of oh, executive things, decisions that you got to make and things like that. And so going back into working for the government or deciding that, you know, my goal is still to be the SES, I wasn't really planning on going back into the GS system. I was like, okay, my goal is still to be a SES. I have all of this executive level um, experience and leadership and things like that. The natural place for me would be to be an SES or so I thought. Um, I reached out to a company that helps people prepare to go for SES positions and I found out, and even though they told me, like the company told me, they were like, Hey, well, SES is really looking for GS 15 level, um, or Colonel. Like if you was in the military, you was a full bird Colonel. Um, they're looking for that level of executive leadership, um, and training. And so, you know, me thinking, well, I have my own company and, you know, I do all of these executive things. And when I'm doing contracts, I'm sitting with SESs when I'm doing contracts. So I'm sitting with SESs. I'm making decisions with SESs and GS-15s who are government um, officials or employees and things like that. And so me as a small business, you know, of course, I'm doing my part for, for them, but I'm in these meetings with them. So I feel as, as, uh, feel like I should have been, I ain't gonna say an equal necessarily, but I feel like how could I go backwards from being in this room here and I'm making decisions and we're looking at spreadsheets and we're doing whatever we're doing. So I'm thinking this makes sense. This is where I really belong. And so what do I need to do? How much more of this private business stuff that I need to be running before it makes sense to transfer over back into an SES position? Like, what could I do? And so I reached out to this company and this company told me, well, none of your experiences actually count because it's not your, your company isn't a large enough company to qualify for executive le level uh, supervisory or leadership. So I was like, man, what are y'all talking about? Okay. I, I have been supervising, managing, hiring, firing. I've been doing all of this stuff as a small business. And so <laughs> they put it in perspective for me. Um, and like, even when they said it, I still had like I still wanted to know more. Like I f still felt like I was missing something. Like maybe y'all misunderstanding. Maybe y'all don't know what I do. What I do when I'm doing what I be doing when I be in these rooms. And you know they put it in perspective for me. And you know we have to be able to listen to criticisms and things like that and to grow from them. And I never wanted to be someone who was so thick headed that I couldn't get it right. I just wanted to know because I mean, the whole time me coming to them is because I know that they're professionals and th this company I'm referring to. And they've helped a lot of people get SES positions and prepare their resumes and all of that kind of stuff. So I come back to them and I'm like, OK, well, 
Tell me, show me where this difference lies because I'm sitting in this room. Maybe you just can't see me sitting in this room with them. Maybe if you saw that, I have my Google Home just be talking sometimes. But I'm like, how do you know, like, how do I do I need to show you proof or do I need to get more proof as I'm doing my leadership thing on these contracts? And they said, no, there's pretty much nothing you can do because OPM has to approve uh, the your leadership, you know, tract kind of. So OPM is going to decide if my what's called ECQs would qualify as an equal to GS-15 level leadership. And I said, OK, well, what what's the difference? Right. Like what what's what's the difference? And it was like, OK, well, how many people, you know, would you say you supervise? And I was like, well, I mean. You know, I have 11 employees, I, so I guess you could say 11 employees, right? Like, I, you know, I'm dealing with all these things, and they were like, yeah, see, that's, that's kind of like the difference, right? Like, even in the military, if you were, say, uh, say if you were a master sergeant and you had 20 people under your, you know, rank or whatever like that was working under you from tech sergeants who managed maybe you had five tech sergeants and each one of those five tech sergeants had four or five enlisted people under them so man yeah maybe if you're this master sergeant you got 20 30 people under you that fall under you that you know that kind of fall in your direct line and then if you are a senior master sergeant and then i'm chief master sergeant or whatever but so you know you could you could maybe have a hundred people under you if you're a chief or two hundred people, and that seems like a lot of people. Well, that's a lot of people. I had eleven when I was in the military as a tech sergeant. I had eleven troops at one time, and then I, then with my company, I had eleven people. So for some reason, the number eleven just sticks with me. And, and um, so I was uh, I was just like looking at it like, well, you know, I had eleven people like supervising and supervising. And they were like, yeah, see, that's that's kind of like the difference, right? A, a full bird colonel or 06 um, is is GS-15 equivalent. And let's say if you are a full bird colonel, how many people do you think would fall under your um, your rank or your whatever? Your I don't know what you would call it, but how many people would actually fall under you if you was a full bird colonel? So. I was at a base, and the, one of the bases I was stationed at, the highest ranking person on base was a full bird colonel. So technically, that was his, he was a base commander, and he was a full bird colonel. So then I started thinking like, oh, well, how many people were at that base? 10,000, 15,000 people? Oh, I, I, I see. Okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing anything of that scale, right? But when you are operating, for an organization where you have several thousands of people, 10, 20, 30,000 people, um, and you're technically in charge, uh, that is a different level of, of leadership. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking about enlisted level leadership, but as a, and then even as an officer, like you may be an officer with like five people under you, 10 people under you. But, you know, full bird colonels, and I'm not saying that all colonels, some colonels may be in positions where maybe they aren't in like a, in a certain kind of role um, where they have a bunch of people under them. But mostly that's, you know, we're talking base commanders. Well, they're, they're able to, they're able to move into a position where they, they could be over that many people. So they typically have had trainings and things like that. Um, to prepare them for that kind of thing. So, no, I had not, I have not had 20,000 people under my, you know, my rank or whatever. Um, so, it made me realize real quick that we're talking about a different kind of thing. And the only way that I could get that level of executive experience to be considered. GS-15 um, or Fulbert Colonel level would be for me to go through the GS-15. 
I have to go become a GS-15 in order for me to become an SES, to get OPM to sign off saying that my training has been approved and it's on the quality and level that they would need it to be to be an SES. So that brings me back into the GS system. So I uh, um, started I, I started back in the GS system and I have I have. I'm working in a leadership role, um, zero three four three, but I'm looking as I've been like doing my you know analyzing and things like that, and just like trying to figure out like where where would I be best suited to get my SES because I don't necessarily really care about like what I'm doing per se as an SES. I just want to be able to obtain the rank <laughs> of the SES. It's like a personal goal. Like it's just my goal. Um, it's not even really about money. Um, it's just the goal of being an SES. So I just want to get to the position. And I don't really care where it is because most SESs are just executive leaders. So they're in, in leadership, which is why I chose the track that I'm on right now. And Love, love what I'm doing, but um, the more and more I've been looking into, you know, movement and possibilities and things like that, I feel like I'd be best. I'd serve myself best at, as in, at, like working in inside of an IG. So, um, as an accountant, well, as an auditor. So. So now my next step is to go towards um, getting back into an IG because there's more opportunity for me to move into an SES inside of an IG than it is for me to have to compete against, you know, Harvard and Yale graduates, which doesn't really matter. They don't look at education at all. I mean, I guess it could help, but they don't, education is not required. They're just really looking at like your leadership skills and things like that. But I feel like I would have the most opportunity um, as an auditor or going through the IG. Um, I, already know the, I already know the work. I know what I'm doing. I'm highly skilled at it. Where, what I'm doing now, I'm like learning still, even though I'm in my position, I'm still kind of like learning because I didn't come from this originally. But um, but yeah, now, of course, if there's some opportunity for me to stay where I am, which I love where I am, but if there's some opportunity for me to stay where I am and, and make my way up, um, then I do that. But I, I have an interview on Monday for my next level rank. So even though I just started back with this um, with this this new organization back in the GS system, I've already been this grade before, and I was already promotable to the next grade level. So I'm looking for that next grade level now because the only reason I'm even working through the GS system is to get to SES, and um, I'm not necessarily just trying to be a certain GS grade just to stick around. No, I got a got a couple years away before, you know, I got a couple years. I got yeah, I got I got a couple years before I'd even get to the GS 15 level um because I still have to spend a year in each different grade. Um I won't go into too much more detail, but you know, close to the top, not quite there. Um and so back working, so it's kind of like a Feeling like I'm going backwards in a way, um, but I'm working my way back to that um, where, I, where I would have been, I guess, had I not gone and did government contracts. So the money was better, but um, but for my career goal, for my personal career goal, because um, the money is going to be good no matter where you go, right? Like where I would go, right? Like if I stayed um, doing government contracts, the money would be good there. If I stayed doing the GS thing, the money will be good there. Like I can be where I'm at for the rest of my life and it'll be good, you know, you know, it'll be good. Six figures are six figures, right? Um, but yeah, so my goal, just to get to my goal, I gotta go through this system, so it is what it is. Um, what else? But yeah, that's where I am right now. 
Just wanted to come on here and give you guys an update. I got so many videos that I've shot, recorded, edited, um, but I still got a bunch of other stuff that I need to edit and get uploaded and then set a release and, you know, get thumbnails created. I just got so much to do, but I've been busy, busy. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, right now you're watching Casino is the Name. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you got any questions about how to work your way through the GS system, give me a call or message me on, you know, or on like Instagram. Hit me up on Instagram. Ask me any kind of questions you got. Anyway, right now you're watching Casino is the Name. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we out.